everybody my name is beauty fat and we are going to talk about my journey um, to bariatric surgery so I have decided that I'm getting the gastric bypass and my surgery is actually scheduled for the 23rd of this month and this past week I had to start my pre-surgery meal prep in my diet I'm allowed to have six to seven ounces of meat one cup of carbohydrates um, and a cup of vegetable um, so for my meats I've chosen steak pork chop chicken breast and ground beef later on I'm gonna get more into um, what I'm actually going to prepare um, for my meals but right now I'm just showing you an idea of what um, my meals will look like um, three times a day I will have a protein shake to supplement the meals that I will not be having and I have four different um, flavors Here's just some of the items that I got from the Dollar Tree so I can properly separate, um, store, and prepare my food. I work Monday through Thursday, so I got four storage containers. And I got this foil because I like to um, separately wrap my meat in foil and bake it in the oven. Here are some samples of meal replacements that my dietitian gave me. Um, there's some chicken flavored soup, um, some type of chocolate shake. Um, here are some of the vitamins that she gave me. She gave me some in capsule form, some in chewy form, and then she gave me one of these large um, chewy tablets for calcium. And I actually like those a lot better and, and I ended up ordering a large bottle. This is the folder that I got during my consultation. Um, it has information for me to look over about what's going to happen during the surgery, um, what I need to do before and after the surgery, and so forth. But my main reason for pulling it up was to show you that it has my meal plan in it. And so um, I just wanted to go over my meal plan with you for just a second. And this is exactly um, how I purchased um, my grocery items. And the dietitian went over with me what I could substitute, what I couldn't substitute, what um, bean I can have, what bean I cannot have, absolutely no peas and so forth. And you'll see where I wrote notes like um, purchase food scale, etc. So this side has day one through four on it. And then after I flip it over, you'll see um, days five through seven. And I will repeat this um, schedule twice. So as you can see, it says begin two weeks prior to surgery, high protein, low carb uh, meal plan. And I plan to do exactly as it instructs. I want my surgery to be 100% successful, so I even went and purchased um, these measuring cups and spoons to ensure that. So some of you may have caught that in some of my previous videos, I would start saying something about weight or start saying something about um, sizes and then I just kind of changed the subject. Well, this is the reason why I changed the subject because I knew I was going to be talking more in depth about my weight when I got ready to um, start filming my journey uh, towards my gastric bypass surgery. And I have been, for about a month, I have been incorporating some of the foods or the supplements that I'm going to be using in my everyday meal intake because I wanted to get myself used to things that I just generally will not eat or drink. Now, I know there are going to be a lot of questions about what made me go this route um, and just a lot of other questions that people ask people who decide to do weight loss surgery. Um, as time goes by, I will get into more of that. If there are any questions that you have that this video or my videos that are coming forward um, 
do not answer just put them in the comments or email me which most people send me a direct email instead of dropping comments and I will try to either address them um, in the comment section or just in private via email or in my videos um, I really don't know how I'm going to do this so I haven't planned on how I'm going to do this um, video recording so we're just gonna play it by ear and just go from there um, but I will say I'm going to um, show my weight every week I'm going to show my weight where I am today I started off at 265 pounds and I am down to whatever the scale is going to show you today um, my goal weight is 160 pounds um, which they actually want me to go down to 145 but I just don't think that's a healthy weight for me being that I've been a plus-size woman most of my life so as I was saying earlier I really don't know how this video is going to go so um, I don't know where I'm gonna place what clips but um, I recorded the different foods that I'm going to be using for my pre surgery meal prep and I showed you a little bit of what was inside of the folder that I have as a guide to the food and vitamins that I'm going to need. Well, um, in on one of the sheets I wrote down to purchase a uh, food scale and I got that from Amazon um, as well as my vitamins and we're about to open those now. So while I'm getting this box open, I will share something with you. I um, started on this journey back in February. Um, when I first decided I wanted to do this, I was going with a group, a surgery group, also with Piedmont. I work I work for Piedmont, and I, so I mostly see Piedmont doctors because I'm insured through them. Um, but at any rate, it only they only referred me to two surgeons. The first surgeon they referred me to is close to a town. I live in Athens, Georgia, and the first surgeon that um, I found is in a town called Monroe, Georgia, which is only 15, 20 minutes from here. And his name is Dr. Donald Maynard. So that's where I started going first, okay? And everything was going fine until COVID hit. When COVID hit, everything started changing. We started having to do things online, over the phone, through video conference, whatever. And everything was working smoothly until one day on one of our support group um, phone conferences, the coordinator of the office tells us, COVID is not an excuse if you don't get your requirements in by such and such date, then it's all your fault, blah, blah, blah. It was just like really insensitive because when COVID hit, doctors off our all of our appointments got canceled and see depending on what your weight is and depending on your insurance company depends on what month type of program you're going to be on whether it's a three month six month nine month 12 month program i'll get into more of that in another video but i was put on a three month program i started in february which means my surgery would need it to have been scheduled at least by june because you get february march april Okay, and then you have between May and June to get your surgery scheduled. Well, because COVID hit in March, everything just kind of stopped, like literally stopped. So um, the requirements for getting surgery are you have to see a psychologist, you have to see a dietitian, you have to see um, a physical therapist, um, a gastrologist and a pulmonologist okay so those are the requirements that you have to meet you have to get clearance also from your uh, primary care doctor so I was I got all of the clearances I had started getting all of the clearances but my pulmonologist put me on a CPAP which I will document later on um, the gastrologist, basically, I just needed an EGD, but because I had a tender, tender stomach at the time, he also ordered me to have a CT scan. Um, the psychologist 
um, they just stopped taking phone calls and everything. Um, everything just kind of ceased. So we were doing the best we could to try to get whoever we could over the phone. Um, Cigna was not paying for um, the televisits at the time. So things had stopped. So for her to tell us that, you know, we could possibly lose our spot in surgery if we didn't find another way to get things done was super insensitive and it pissed me off. So I ended up calling the doctor's office and I was, I, I left a voice, I left several voicemails and sent emails and nobody would return my messages. So, um, the next thing that made me mad with the office was they give you a set of requirements when you, on your first consultation visit, you have a set of requirements that you have to meet. I met those requirements. Well, because of COVID, they changed those requirements, but they didn't tell us in person, over the phone, via email, through mail, or nothing. So when I was when I went to submit some of my items, they told me that I had not done something. So I sent them the items that I and I, I scanned and emailed the requirements that they told me that I had to meet in proof that I met those requirements. And they got back to me and said, well, now you need to do such and such, such and such, or you're just going to lose your spot in surgery. If anybody knows me, you just can't handle me like that. It's not going to work. If you require me to do something, then you are required to tell me what it is that I need to do. They failed. I emailed the surgeon himself, the coordinator, called the office, the dietitian, sent emails, and they just did not contact me back any further. Just like that. So I called, I got on the phone and I called Cigna and I asked them, listen, you know, if I switch surgeons, am I going to have to do start everything over? And they basically told me as long as the surgeon accepts everything that I've already done, then they would still, you know, pay for my, well, cover my surgery because they cover all but 20%. So I got on the, got online and found Dr. Kevin McGill and it was just confirmation that one of my co-workers from the hospital I used to work in um, was also having had also had the surgery and just in case you're watching hi Miranda um, and she told me that she uses used Dr. Kevin McGill and that was just a blessing in disguise to me because he is 70 miles away from me where this doctor was only about 15 20 miles away from me but I didn't care because one thing about it I want to feel confident this is not just some little easy procedure this is a big surgery and when I was going to Dr. Maynard's I had decided to do the sleeve when I got to Dr. McGill's office he gave me so much information where I realized I didn't need the sleeve I actually needed the bypass and that's what I decided to do and I was glad that I did that his office is so professional. I don't care when I email or call, they always respond back. If it's something that they can't do, they tell me. If it's something they don't do, they tell me. They don't just leave me in limbo. They are excellent at communicating. And half of the things that Dr. Maynard's office was requiring me to, requiring me to do for my surgery, this office has not required me to do. And I got approved for my surgery within two weeks of being with this office. So if you um, are a men member of Cigna's insurance plan, if you're an employee of Piedmont Healthcare and you are considering weight loss surgery, I am recommending Dr. Kevin McGill. The office is wonderful. Okay, so like I was saying, um, I had to order a food scale. So I got one off, I found this one on Amazon. And um, you'll see why I picked it <laughs> because it's red. <laughs> I love the color red, and I was just looking for food scales, and this one popped up. But Amazon, anybody that uses Amazon enough knows that Amazon uses your previous purchases and things that you search to kind of show you you know um what they think you will like and so when i 
put in food scale they brought up a red one and anybody that's seen my place which you can tell in the background i accent my place with red because it's my favorite color so here is the food scale um i'll be putting it together in a little while not right now but this is the company that it's um, made by i got it through amazon prime um and like i said we'll be handling that in a little while um after my surgery i will be on a different diet plan it's a full liquid um diet for for two to, for two to four weeks we'll get more into that later um, and I will have to take um, a multivitamin twice a day and a calcium vitamin um, three times a day. And this is the vitamin. I got them in chewables um, because my dietitian, she, like I showed you in a previous clip, she gave me several samples of multivitamins and the calcium vitamins gummies, chewies, and tablets. And I prefer the chewy one, so that's what I ended up getting. And I got from Amazon. I get everything from Amazon and Walmart. You'll see. And here is the chewable. Oh, this is the chewable multivitamin. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Reading definitely is fundamental. This is the calcium, which you guys probably had already seen, and I misspoke. I need 1,500 um, milligrams of calcium a day, which is why I said I'm going to be taking three of these. And um, the multivitamin, I will need two of these. So this is a 30-day supply, basically, and they are not cheap. When I say they're not cheap, I mean that they are not cheap at all. Um, I think they were both $55 or $155 and the other one $45. The vitamins are not cheap. This whole entire process isn't cheap, okay? Give me just a second. And All right, so pricing the sleeve versus the bypass. Um, the sleeve is somewhere between between eight and $10,000. The gastro bypass is $14,000. My insurance will cover 80% of that and I'm responsible for 20%. So I had already been working on saving my 20%, but that does not include all of the co-pays and co-insurances that you're going to face for your uh, pre-doctor visits, pre-surgery doctor visits. And like I said, the first office that I went to, they had me trying to fulfill requirements. When I say requirements, I mean requirements. So, Hold on. The first office that I went to, I had so much paperwork from weight loss journals to um, exercise journals, food journals. I had, I wanna say three different uh, journals that I had to do every single day, two and three times a day, seven days a week, okay? I had a folder this thick full of stuff that they were, were telling me they had to submit to the insurance company. With Dr. McGill's office, this is it. That's it. This is all I have. I can't tell you what a relief it was to switch to Dr. Kevin McGill's office because they make you responsible for everything but they only require from you what the insurance company actually needs for you to get approved for your surgery. And that makes a big difference for somebody that works full time, goes to school full time. I'm trying to become a YouTuber. I write my own books and I still try to fit time for people that need me for notarizing uh, paperwork, creating correspondence letters and resumes. Okay, so I'm a pretty busy person and this is my responsibility so i was trying to fulfill all of these goals and still am so um at any rate um when i switched to dr mcgill's office i no longer had to submit all of these journals and that made a huge difference in my progress because 
y'all it was a lot i'm just gonna leave it at that it was a lot so at any rate um let's skip some of this stuff because some of this stuff really isn't that important right now it will be when i get ready to record um some of the future journaling we're going to talk um uh, go ahead and talk more into the food prep i'm gonna go ahead and get my scale so i can weigh myself and you can see where i am and i'm going to do that every week going forward so going forward my video clips may be only two to three minutes long just because this journey is going to be a long process and i'm not going to do 15 minute videos every single time okay so i'm at 252 pounds down what 13 pounds and i'm gonna do another video soon to show my weight loss journey because i have a long one like i've been trying to lose weight for a long time I didn't start out being a plus size girl. I became plus size after I had my daughter um, in 1994 and I got on Depra Provera. And birth control is the reason why most of us um, start gaining weight. But it wasn't the only thing that started um, my weight gain. But anyway, look, I wanted to show what I look like um, at 252 pounds. This is how I look. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, yeah. So first it was the depot shot in the 90s that started my weight um, gain. Then it was psychiatric medicines that I was put on, put on again. Um, later in life, um, mainly the Risperdal. Risperdal took me from 180 pounds all the way to 255 pounds within about a four month period. That's literal, that is the true. It's been known to give men breasts. That's how horrible that drug is. So hopefully nobody's having to take that drug now. Yes, I took psychiatric medicines. I've been on psychiatric medicines from the time I was 13 until about two years ago. Um, and we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> All right, so I don't have a whole lot of time today because I have to go to work. Um, and I have something that I need to do for school. Yes, it is a holiday, but it's not a holiday for me. Um, but anyway, I was just going to touch bases lastly on my food prep. So as I pretty much said in one of the clip that where I showed all of my food, I can have six ounces of a meat and two ounces of um, one to two ounces of, I mean, one to two cups. No, I can have six ounces of meat per day and I can have a cup, one cup of carbs per day. And I can have one cup of a green vegetable um, per day, but it can't be green peas it can't be a pea or a bean um, unless it's a green bean so it can't be like black beans or kidney beans I can't explain all all of that but some of the things that I could have I don't eat there's a lot of things I don't eat a lot of things I will not drink so that's how me and my dietitian came up with what I'm going to have for my two weeks pre um, surgery meal intake um, so what I'm going to do, which I'm not going to show you this time, but when I get ready to do it over the weekend, I'll show you um, how I'm going to weigh my meats um, using the food scale, how I'm going to weigh and portion um, my meals. So essentially, I'm going to drink a, an 11 ounce um, Ensure Max Protein Nutrition Shake three times a day. I have three, four different flavors. I have cafe mocha, mixed berry, French vanilla, and milk chocolate. I think I already said that in that other clip. But in case somebody missed it, this is what we're doing, okay? Um, and I can't, she told me I could season my food with whatever I wanted. Um, but I decided to get salt free Mrs. Dash, the table blend. Um, this, I want to tell people. This is a game changer. This black and white peppercorn pepper, when I tell you, when you put this on any food, any food, tuna, vegetables, meat, soup, whatever, this, baby, this is, this, try this, try this. 
and then I can't have butter so I had to get margarine and that's what I'm gonna soak my meats in I'm gonna soak my meats in margarine Mrs. Dash and black and white pepper um, I'm going to store them my meats in the containers and I'm going to prepare my um, meals that I can have one a day. I'm going to do them on a Sunday for work. I'm going to prepare for because I work Monday through Thursday. And I'm off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from my, what do you call it? Professional job, career job, clock-in job, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to... I could what I could have was black brown or wild grain rice so once a week I'm going to make some rice I could also have potatoes I have no idea where the potatoes are I put them somewhere y'all and I can't find them but I can have half a baked potato with one of my meals so that's what I'm going to do so at right, any rate. so I know that this video has kind of been all over the place and I apologize for that but I am pressed for time but I didn't want to continue trying to postpone get this video out so people can understand why I haven't been wanting to talk about my weight. Um, I'll, I promise I will do an in-depth video about my weight loss journey from the first time I ever started up until now. That will include pictures so you can see just how small I've been and how huge I've been. Um, it's been a long journey. Um, so like I said earlier, please leave in the comments or submit me an email. My email address, I have two email addresses. You can contact me on Facebook, you can contact me on Instagram, uh, Gmail, Yahoo, or just on here, however you want to. If you have any questions about bariatric surgery or any personal questions for why I chose to have bariatric surgery. I'm going to end this video for now. I hope that this information has been helpful to anybody that is struggling with the idea of having weight loss surgery. I know I haven't talked about everything, but if you continue to watch, you will see my journey. And I hope that it either inspires you to do what you've been wanting to do, or if you find that it isn't for you, it will give you that confirmation. Thank you so much for watching my video, for tuning in. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. I have finally reached 260 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 300. Once I get to 300, I'm going to do a $5 giveaway, and then we're just going to keep on until we get these subscribers where we need them to be. Thanks for again for watching, and please don't forget to like my video. Bye, guys.